Hello, welcome to Catholic Mom and Daughter, and today we are talking history mysteries. Some of these you might have heard of, and maybe some of them you haven't, but they're all interesting and we wanted to share them with you today. So the first mystery is the mystery of the Laredo Staircase in New Mexico. This mystery is about this staircase that was built for the sisters out in like old New Mexico. Santa Fe. <laughs> they had they had built a new chapel and the architect forgot room for a staircase to the yes. choir loft. <laughs> so they were having a lot of trouble getting a staircase yeah. and there wasn't enough room to build a traditional staircase so they the sisters were in a pickle <laughs> um but then so they decided to pray a novena to saint joseph because he's the patron saint of carpenters and on the ninth day this random carpenter carpenter shows up out of the desert and he builds the uh, staircase for them he wants to do it in complete privacy but it is that amazing spiral staircase that we know about. Yeah, the staircase is so amazing because it has two complete 360 degree turns. Um, it is made without nails and it is made of spruce wood, but not spruce that is native to the area because, you know, they're in the desert. It's New Mexico. <laughs> they're not native to the United States. And some people claim that no variety of spruce that matches the staircase has been ever found anywhere on Earth. Space so, spruce. Space spruce. <laughs> I don't know. So that's really cool. So the sisters believe that it was St. Joseph who definitely came and built this staircase because after the staircase was built, this guy just disappeared. He didn't accept any <laughs> payment uh, for his work. And when the sisters went into town to pay at the general store for the lumber and the supplies that he used, the storekeeper said, oh, he didn't buy anything you know, from us. They couldn't find anyone who had sold him any supplies. So it is indeed quite a mystery, yeah. but the staircase is still there. The chapel is still there. You can go and see it. And if you've already been, you're so lucky and I'm <laughs> jealous. It's on my bucket list. And if you want a really good picture book for younger children, there is this one, a uh, staircase for the sisters. This was put out by the Sisters of St. Paul. This is the Pauline Kids Press. So it's just a cute little picture, but great illustrations. Um, goes over the story in a really clear way. Yeah, it's a new book. It's only put out in 2018, I think, but it just has the sweetest illustrations. On the website or the YouTube channel of the Sisters of St. Paul in Charleston, they have what's called story time with the sisters, where they actually read picture books put out by um, the Saint, the Pauline Press. So this, the, the sisters are so cute. They have this little story time nook set up with a teddy bear and a fireplace, and they read these picture books that are published by their company. And it just so happens that A Staircase for the Sisters is one of the books they read. So that is a great resource. You can, I think they have five or six at this point of their books on YouTube that you can just watch. So that's an awesome little perk from the Sisters of St. Paul and maybe St. Joseph too. Another neat thing about the staircase in Laredo is that the whole story was made into a movie starring Barbara Hershey. So it is a bit of an older movie, but it's really well done and is also available free on YouTube. You can watch the whole movie. We've done that as a family. It was really good. So I highly recommend that to go along as you ponder <laughs> the mystery of the spiral staircase. The next history mystery is a well-known mystery involving the Shroud of Turin. Now, I think this is probably one of the most debated mysteries of all time. Was it the burial cloth of Jesus or was it not? So, last winter, I discovered this book, The Shroud by John Walsh, in a giveaway box at church. And I thought, oh, this looks interesting. And it really is. Of course, my copy is in tatters, but that's all right. Um, it was written in 1963, 
So you don't have the controversy about the carbon dating thrown in. You just have the information that they could work with at the time. The book starts out with going back all the way to the year 500, I think, and St. Helena and the cross and what she found and how the shroud has come down through history to us. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give all the details away because it's just fascinating. I would just say this is a great book for middle schoolers on up. A middle schooler could definitely <laughs> read this book independently. A high school student would enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Your family will enjoy it. This book is out of print, but not to worry. You can find it at the library. Also, Amazon has copies of it in a lot better shape than mine for $6, and that includes shipping. So that is a bargain. All right, so our last history mystery is the mystery that surrounded the discovery of St. Peter's tomb underneath the Vatican. So for this, we have a book called The Fisherman's Tomb by John O'Neill, and this goes over the whole story of how they were excavating and trying to find Peter's tomb. The Vatican was being excavated right before World War II, and that's when they got the hint that something big might be down there. But of course, you don't want Hitler to know, you don't want Mussolini to know. So Pope Pius XII is really sitting on a dilemma. I, do, I cannot announce this finding to the world because I'll be overrun by fascists and Nazis, but yet we want to go forward with this excavation. So the book explains how it all pans out. It tells you about the people who were involved. There was the little known American millionaire, um, George Strake, um, who completely funded the whole thing. Yes, and it also um, talks about the, the amazing archaeologist Maria Guarducci. She put all the pieces together. Yeah, she brought puzzle. it all together. She masterminded, I guess. Yeah, without Maria, I don't know that they would have been able to confirm that it was Peter's tomb. And we can't give away too many of the details of how it all came to pass. But it is super interesting, and it's a great read for high school or adults. Even I think a middle schooler could even yeah. younger yeah. kids could enjoy it as a read aloud. It's totally fascinating. All right, so those are the three mysteries that we have enjoyed at our house lately. If you have a good Catholic history mystery and you want to leave it down in the comments below, that would be great. But until then, get your Nancy Drew on, <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye.